Hi, for fun, I'm Hyper, and welcome to Finalysis. In this episode, we're going to be showcasing a key example of patience in pushback. When you should be hoarding balls, when you should be scoring, and when you should be camping goals. We're going to show how patience in right times can lead to victories. A great example that we are going to break down is from the Saratoga Pushback Tournament, where in finals, you have the number one seeded Red Alliance of 295Y and 88909Y versus the number two seeded Blue Alliance of 11101B and 11101K. The Blue Alliance played an amazing game, but they did not have patience in key moments, which ultimately led to them losing. Pay attention to when these teams are scoring, when they are not, and how the other Alliance can capitalize on this. Let's dive in and let us know your thoughts on fun analysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Did you know that fun has awesome merch options, including game theme merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun themed apparel, you can directly support fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a fun member or supporter through YouTube join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support. Let's jump straight into this match. On the red lines, we have 295Y in the bottom right over here, and we have 88909Y in the top right over here. Then, for the blue lines, we have 11101K, BarkBots K in the bottom left, and we have 11101B in the top left over here. What I first want to look at is BarkBots B's autonomous routine over here, in contrast to 88909Y's autonomous routine on the top right. What BarkBots B does that I really, really like is they collect six balls from the middle here, five, three from here, two from here, and then one from their preload, and they immediately go dump these off into the long goal. I believe that this is a perfect strategy because you're immediately getting six out of the 14 long goal control balls. They then go to the match loader and get three more, ultimately scoring nine in the long goal. This basically prevents the other team in, line, in Autonomous from having the control bonus in this long goal. It also gives them a huge advantage as they can just sit there during the beginning of the match, collect a few more balls, and then be able to score in these middle goals later on to be able to flip the match if they need to. In contrast, what 88909Y does is they go for this autonomous win. Now, while this autonomous win is a valuable strategy because they have 10 points more than the other alliance, I don't think it's the best strategy here. See, they try to go for these low goals, which is great, but then they're at a huge disadvantage for this long goal. They're going to be down nine balls in this long goal, which is just such an insurmountable amount to come back from. Let's watch this play out. As you can see, 88909Y ends up missing this long goal entirely. While that wasn't the point of what I was trying to make, that, while, while that wasn't the point that I was trying to make, what ends up happening is that they're at such a disadvantage from these nine balls that were scored there, that even if they scored the three or four balls that they tried to from this long goal, they would have been down so much. Essentially, what BarkBots can do here is they can play that patient strategy that I was talking about. They can just go to this match loader, grab a few more balls, since they're already up this long goal bonus, they can just grab a few more balls, go to this center, score a few more when they need to, not immediately, but when they need to, when, the, when there's an opportunity that the other alliance isn't trying to de-score this long goal, and then they're basically up the entire match. Similarly, in the bottom left, BarkBots K had a very nice autonomous routine. They went for these three balls over here, and then they went for the three more balls in the match loader, trying to score the seven total that they would have had. They would have had one from the preload, three from over here, three from the match loader, and then seven total. That gives them seven out of the 14 balls in the long goal control in the long goal, which meant that they would have almost been guaranteed this control bonus being one ball up on 295Y over here. Unfortunately, their autonomous routine misses, but I still like the thought process that they had. Essentially, the thought process of both BarkBots B and BarkBots K is they just want to get this long goal control, bon control bonus as soon as possible. If they're up both control bonuses, in addition to what they would have been up autonomous at the time, they can kind of just sit on these goals. They don't really need to do anything. They can just play a very patient strategy. They can grab a few more balls, like I said, for BarkBots B, they can hoard them, and then maybe when they need to, they can score in the middle. In contrast to scoring in the middle, they could also just hoard them. And if the other team happens to de-score a few of them from here, they can just replenish the balls that are de-scored. 
I similarly like 295Y strategy. Now they ended up missing one of the balls in this goal. However, they would have had seven balls in this control bonus. Or sorry, in this long goal. Which again almost guarantees them that control bonus, or they would have been tied on it with Barkbot's B. With their with their little stick that we'll see later on in the match, that they can just block the long goal off. That again guarantees them this long goal bonus, and they can just play a very patient strategy. Now, if both autonomous routines had worked, I would have loved Barkbot's and Barkbot's B and Barkbot's K's position here. Unfortunately, that didn't work, and we're gonna see what ends up happening in this match right after our comments. Let's just fast forward to when the match is about to start. As they're tallying up Autonomous, we see that the Red Alliance ends up winning it because they have two balls in the slow goal, uh, which was 88909Y's contribution. However, it would have been a pretty clear blue Auton had BarkBot's K's Auton work. Let's get ready to run. As the announcer is about to start it in three, two, one, go. Immediately, what BarkBots does is what I was saying. They go clear out this match later. They unfortunately don't have the proper amount of balls to be able to score in, or they don't have any blue balls, excuse me, because they had to clear out the red balls from the match letter. However, what they're doing is getting the, getting the match letter ready so that they can grab blue balls when they need to. Then, as they see that 88909Y goes to D square their goal, they immediately go back to this long goal. They realize, hey, we have such an advantage on this blue goal. All we need to do is defend it. Similarly, what 295Y does is they go to deploy their little stick mechanism, as I like to call it. What this does is they can kind of just wedge themselves right here. They can just block off the tube from being able to be scored on from this perspective. And then if anyone tries to score from this other angle, they can kind of just move backwards and de-score those immediately, just having wedged themselves inside the tube. I love this strategy. You know that you're up autumn. You know that you're up this long goal. Just maintain it. That's all you need to do. It's similar to what we saw in high stakes last year, where when a team knew that they had the positive corner, all they had to do is defend that. That's what I like to see here. What I don't necessarily like here is what BarkBot's K tries to do. They try to just wedge them off of this long goal which I don't really understand what they're trying to do here because even if they wedge them off this long goal, they don't have balls to be able to score in, in here. This is an example of when I don't think that BarkBot's K should have the patience of trying to play on this on this one long goal here. They instead should be going to the match loader, trying to get as many blue balls as possible, and then hoarding them until they see the bright opportunity to be able to score. Let's keep playing this match. See, this is exactly what I was talking about, about 295Y just kind of wedging themselves within this goal. Now they have, what, one, almost two balls in this middle goal. And once they move forward, when BarkBot's K moves off of them, then they can just have five or six balls in the center control bonus guaranteed them. I really love this strategy, again, because they know they're up. Similarly, what I like in the top is that BarkBot's knows that they're up. They know they can just sit here onto this long goal. Again, maybe collect a few more balls and then they're good. Additionally, 88909Y kind of realizes that they're not going to win this battle on this long goal. While I am a big advocate for this patience idea of just kind of sitting on these goals when you're up, they know that they're not up on this goal. In contrast, they're just trying to create as much chaos as possible and do something completely different to what BarkBots is trying to do so that they can try to get this goal back if maybe BarkBots leaves or just score a few more balls in the center. So you can see they're going for that match loader right there. Again, perfect play by 88909Y. They see that the opportunity is open to score in this long goal. They know, or sorry, in these middle goals, they know that the long goal is not open for them to score in. So they're just trying to rack up as many points as possible when they can. Again, while I'm an advocate for hoarding your balls, this is not a time that you should be hoarding your balls. You see that you're you see that you're down on this goal. You are up Auton, which in addition to this goal does give you a tiny bit of an advantage, but you still need to be able to create as many plays as possible. Ultimately, 88909Y's play is pretty good as well because it draws 11101K away from this from 295Y. That means that 295Y can fully wedge their stick in there and they can just play their strategy. 
What I don't particularly like about this moment is that Parkbots B is in this top left and they're trying to score as many balls in this long goal as possible. Now, they were already up nine balls to nothing on this long goal, so even if the other team were to score a few more balls, it's not really a big advantage for them to do so. In contrast, Barkbots is already down the center goal. You're down with a lot of balls in the center goal because you have they have three in the top and then one or two in the bottom. So what they should be doing is they should be grabbing these balls and then just holding on to them for as long as possible in the match. If later in the match it ends up being the case that they need a few more balls in this long goal to score here, they can do that because it'll probably be open. However, if it ends up being the case that they need to score in the center in the center goal later on and you have already scored these balls in the long goal, how are you going to be able to make up for that and, and have these bonuses? Barkbot should really be focusing on the bonuses rather than having the most balls possible. With Barkbot's K over here, they end up trying to score their balls in this center, in this long goal over here, which I, again, I don't particularly like. They're scoring these balls in this long, in this long goal, even though they know that 295Y can just kind of move backwards and de-score them over here. Barkbot's K should be focusing on that hoarding or that patience strategy. They should recognize, well, hey, they're not going to move from here, so let's score them in this goal only if they move, only if 295Y moves from this goal. If not, we should be holding our balls to be able to score in this long goal whenever we get an opportunity, and then just kind of camping and playing a patient strategy on this on this middle goal. If Barkbots B and K were to be up this entire long goal, because Barkbots has already scored them in there, even though I don't think that was the best strategy, they already scored them in there. If Barkbots were to defend this long goal and one of the short goals over here in the center, they'd be up. They'd almost instantly win the match because of what the other team is doing. So you should be focusing on where you should be scoring the, ball, the balls and when you should be hoarding them rather than just immediately scoring them mindlessly. Here, I love what BarkBots does. See, they, re they realize an opportunity to be able to score in the center goal. They were patient about it. They realized when the other team wasn't there. And then immediately, as soon as um, as soon as 88909Y leaves that center goal, leaves leaves the area that they're at to try and de-square their goal, Park Boss immediately goes back. They're playing a sort of zone defense. See, they're on this long goal, defending it when they can, but then they're also defending uh, this area if they can as well. They're just focusing that their main priority is to defend this long goal with all, at all costs. Similarly, BarkBot's K finally realizes that this is their perfect opportunity to score in this long goal. When there's no one there, they score in this, or sorry, they score in this center goal, and they should kind of just camp there for the rest of the match. They have this one long goal here, they have this goal, they should just be a patient strategy, maybe collect a few more balls, but just hoard them for when and if your if, if your long goals are descored. However, they're not patient. They end up leaving this, this center goal, which presents an opportunity for 88909Y to be able to score in the center goal. Now, BarkBots has to come off of their, of their long goal to be able to defend this center goal, which ultimately is gonna rise for an opportunity for 88909Y to be able to come back to this goal and try and de-score it. See, this is a fine strategy, but what, what BarkBots K should be realizing is, hey, BarkBots B has left this long goal so now we need to come and defend this long goal so that we maintain our advantages as much as possible. Again, this is what I talked about with the patience thing. They try and score in this long goal as much as possible, which isn't the best idea. You have balls, you should be saving them for when and if this middle goal gets descored. You see there's a play playing out here, so someone's going to end up winning, and if it's not you, you want to be able to have balls that you can replenish these center goals with. These balls here are just going to get immediately descored, which is by 295 wide because they're just going to move backwards, which is a dumb strategy. You want control bonuses, you don't necessarily want all the balls scored at outwards. And see, now, because there wasn't enough patience out of both of these alliances, what ends up happening is they're both, or sorry, by both of these teams on the blue alliance, is they're both by the center goal, 
They're both not in position to defend this long goal. And now 88909Y is just going to sweep by and de-score this entire long goal. Now, thankfully, Parkbot's B is able to get back to this long goal as soon as possible. They collect a few more balls to replenish, which I think they should be hoarding, as I said earlier, because they still have this long goal bonus, and there's still a pretty chaotic situation unfolding here. They should wait until there's an open slot to score these if they need to, or save them if they need to replenish this. But they still were able to get back in position as well. However, if 88909Y had maybe a half second more, they would have been able to de-score this entire goal, and now BarkBots would have been in a really, really bad position. And BarkBots K is just doing the perfect thing. They're scoring the center goal, they're kind of playing zone defense on it, they're doing a perfect thing. I don't really know what 88909Y is doing over here because they're just kind of they're just they're just kind of roaming around. They're not really trying to score anywhere. They do go to the center goal, but they don't have any balls to score. So I think they're going to try and de-score, which is a good play because they realize that this that this goal is is unfair. Now, I kind of do like what 295Y does here because they end up leaving this goal knowing that they're knowing that they have the bonus, but that they need a few more balls to they need a few more balls scored in the center to be able to win because um, they realize that they're that they're down in this situation, which is perfect. You can leave the goal. I don't necessarily think it's the worst strategy, but you only should be leaving these goals when you're down, when you know that you need a different play to be able to win. So there's a little bit of chaos here. And now BarkBots gets distracted. They end up leaving their goal, which is fine because they, they go back to it. But then they go to park, they realize they don't think about the fact that they're up, that all they need to do is defend this goal to win. They go to park and watch what happens as they park. The key moment in the entire match. 88909Y just comes, descores this entire goal, which was the entire swing of the match. BarkBots would have won this match had they just stayed patient, had they just uh, been able to stay on this goal and just kind of defend it. Similarly, BarkBots K um, didn't have the balls that they needed to be able to score in this goal. They deposited them way earlier. If they had hoarded a few more balls, collected a few more balls, they might have been able to make a play in this goal and be able to score a few more balls that would have maybe swung this match even with this last goal. Well, that match was super interesting with a lot of different strategies. Let us know if you think the Blue Alliance could have done something different for them to have won. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Fun to keep up to date with all our content. I'm Heitner, and thanks for watching Fun Analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options, including game theme merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun themed apparel, you can directly support Fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a Fun member or supporter through YouTube Join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support.